Welcome to the Shader Dev series for 3D graphics for games. Uh, I mentioned in a video I did a while back that if I got enough interest in doing shader stuff that I would do an entire series on it. And um, I don't want to say I got a ton, but um, enough of you guys clicked like and, and that was enough for me to go ahead and do this. And I kind of wanted to do this. So um, I want to talk about I want to talk about how to do shader development for 3D games, but I realized if I do what I did last time, just dive right into the code, for somebody who doesn't have familiarity with that stuff, it's going to be really, really, really complicated and too hard to understand. So what I thought I would do is I would go through at least the first couple episodes uh, through a 3D math primer for, for games. A lot of the stuff I'm talking about is, is 3D. Uh, the examples are 3D, but... Um, they can apply to 2D as well, though in 2D games you can usually get away with uh, not thinking about these things as much. But for 3D, it's it's almost crucial. And for, for anything that involves 3D graphics, including shader development, you really need to understand uh, what this stuff is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through it and explain it. Um, so I basically just covered that. What is this all about and where is it going? Um, like I said, I... I, I it's important to understand the base, at least basic 3D math. You might hate math. I know I did when I started, and I'm still not that fond of it. But um, the more you drill through this stuff and the more you gain an understanding, at least basic 3D concepts, the easier it's going to be on you when you're trying to actually write 3D programming, 3D game code. So uh, there's going to be two programming languages that we're going to cover. Um, and by cover, I just mean very, very loose examples. Just because I'm a game programmer, I can't talk in abstract concepts. I usually have to show code. Um, the first one, C++, C++ which um, hopefully you know if you're watching this video. Um, if you don't, I have a video tutorial just to get you started on C uh, on another playlist. And the other one is GLSL, and that is the OpenGL shading language. It is very similar to just about any other shading language there is out there, including uh, the DirectX one, HLSL. Um, so the concepts pretty much transfer over. Um, the best way you can think of these two languages is that, you know, where C and C++ you're programming for, for the CPU, GLSL is a language that's, that's programming for the GPU. And uh, it's not a general purpose GPU programming language. Those do exist, and I don't want to get into those. It's an OpenGL specific shading language, which means it's very geared towards the operation of shading an object for, this, for OpenGL or for a graphic system. Um, and we're going to get way into GLSL down the road in this video tutorial, but for now we're just going to start basic mathematical concepts for 3D games. So these are the things we will be using in just about all the time when we're working on 3D games, and I mean like these come up almost all the time. You don't see them as much once you get your engine done and you're working at a high level, but they're still relevant. And they're, they're definitely relevant to shader development. Uh, first one is vertices, or commonly called points. Uh, then there's vectors. I underline that one because that one is probably the most important and the easiest one to confuse out of the whole bunch. Um, polygons, or commonly called faces, planes, um, which are geometric planes, angles, which are just angles, coordinate systems, which are very important, and I'm going to spend a lot of time on that, transforms and matrices, which are equally as important, and I'm going to spend a lot of time on that, and then of course uh, food, because if you don't eat food, you're going to have a bad time to eat some food. All right. Uh, I only, or I'm only going to cover that. Believe it or not, the first two in this video, and that's because really vectors deserves an entire freaking video just to talk about that, which is what I'm going to do. Um, this is just kind of a quick example of of, of what these things look like. I'm going to go into all the details, so don't worry about that. But uh, it's a diagram. So points. Points are positions in space. They tell us where things are. Um, like I said, all the examples are going to be in 3D, so these are points in 3D space. That special green dot is called the origin, and points are all points are always relative to their origin, which is basically the point special point coordinate zero zero zero, and um, they basically are 
they're the basic building blocks of doing anything in 3D because if you don't have a point or a position, you just don't know where you are. Um, oh, screw this slide up. Um, so basically, they have a mathematical definition that looks like the thing in the middle, which is going to appear. Uh, in C and C++, they're commonly, you know, just X, Y, Z in a struct. And in GLSL, there actually has built-in types to represent um, 2D, 3D, and 4D um, points you can think of. Uh, the most common one that I want to focus on right now is VEC3, which is a, uh, a 3D, X, Y, Z, you know, point in GLSL. Um, they help you represent things like the player position or the position of anything in your game. <clears throat> the vertices of a graphics primitive, meaning the vertices of a polygon or particles or anything that you're drawing in your game. They're very important for that. And, uh, you know, things. Because, uh, to be honest with you, I can't think besides those two positions and vertices of anything else that points are used for. And I'm sure it's just because I'm drawing a blank, but um, they're not... You just use them a lot. There's really not much I can say about points. Um, getting into vectors, though, um, I tried to think of a one-sentence description that could describe these things because there's so much I could say about them just starting right out. But basically, vectors are magnitudes and directions in space. They're both. They tell us where things are relative to one another. Um, the easiest way to think about a vector is that it's an arrow. Um, as you can see in that chart below, basically the x, y, and z axis can be represented as vectors. Um, you know, basically each, each one of those axes is a direction in 3D space, uh, in the x direction, the y direction, and z direction. But also, um, they can be um, vectors from points to another. So there's two white points down there in the lower right hand side. Um, there can be a vector that represents uh, the, the direction or the offset from the first point to the second, going to that second point. Uh, there's so much more I could say, and I think the best thing to do is to just go into the next, the next slide here. So each vector contains, can contain two important pieces of information, and I want to really just drill this. It's the direction and the magnitude. The direction is any direction in 3D space that you can think of, just if you think of a vector going from your body right now, if you point your hand anywhere around you, that's that's a direction. That's a vector direction. And then there's a magnitude. Um, the best way to describe the magnitude is it's basically how strong the vector is or, or how long the arrow is, is the, is the magnitude. Um, and it and these can be split up into their two components, uh, which I'm going to uh, demonstrate. But, or, uh, yeah, basically. So, a lot of people think of vectors as containing two pieces of information besides the direction and the magnitude, but basically they can be thought of as the tail and the head. Uh, the tail of the vector is, is the part that's basically where the arrow is stemming from, and the head is the very tip of the arrow. Um, it's important to bring this up because this can get really confusing when you think of vectors versus points or vertices. Um, since a vector is always relative to something, um, you want to make it so the vector, the same vector can be used relative to anything you want to start it from. So the general way of thinking about a, a vector is that the tail is always zero, uh, and the head is really the vector uh, itself. So when you think of how to represent a vector, you really have two things. You have the tail of the vector and the head of the vector, but since the tail is always considered zero, you really just think of uh, the vector in terms of the head, the x, y, z components of the vector. And that's why vectors are defined mathematically as basically the same <laughs> as a point, which is basically just the x, y, z. But the, with a major difference being that um, you're assuming that this is a relative offset from some origin. Uh, I know it's really, really hard to talk about this stuff, but the more you go through it in your head and the more you play with vectors, uh, one day it'll just click and make sense. Um, so you're going to notice right away, like I said, that vectors are exactly the same structurally, meaning they have the same x, y, z part in them as points do. And that can be very interesting because the difference between a vector and a point is really how you interpret the x, y, z. Like I said, a point is some point in 3D space relative to a specific origin, 
where a vector is an offset from an arbitrary origin in 3D space. It, it, and the best way to think of them is just always think of that arrow in your head and, and the XYZ being the, um, the offset between a tail of, of a vector and that tail is only zero. Um, so now that I've thoroughly confused the shit out of you, I thought I might go over some things that vectors are useful for. Um, there's tons. So you could think of it, you could, the player velocity could be a vector, player acceleration can be a vector, the direction the player is currently looking, the direction from a player to the nearest enemy, the direction to, to the sun can be a vector, the force of a bomb blast blowing you back through a door or something, gravity is a vector, normal vectors are vectors used for lighting, the normal uh, vector of a surface, which I'm going to cover later down the, uh, down the tutorial pipeline, wind direction and speed, the direction being the direction and the speed being the magnitude can be all uh, represented by a single vector. You get the point. Um, there's so much more, in my opinion, that you can do with vectors than with standard points, and that's why it's important to, to learn how they work. So, more confusion, unfortunately. Uh, vectors versus vectors versus vectors. So, some jerk decided to use the same word for a lot of different concepts, and just like the word pointers in C, or not pointers, static in C, um, the word vector is a little different depending on how you're thinking of it. So, the first part is the, uh, the definition of what a mathematical or a math vector is. And uh, they're not much different than the vectors I was talking about, but they're, they're really just... Um, they're almost like lower level types. So they can be row vectors. <laughs> I got those two flipped. And they can be column vectors. So it, there's actually a direction based off of uh, what a math vector can be. And that has to do with the fact that vectors in math are usually uh, used in conjunction with matrices in math. Uh, for our general purposes, the good news is we don't have to care that much. I almost always in my head think of the vectors that uh, in programming or the vectors for for what we were just talking about as column vectors, and that seems to work just fine. Um, programming vectors, which is why I didn't want to misspeak just now. Programming vectors are um, completely different from math vectors. Really, they're just another name for arrays. Uh, the reason why I bring this up um, is that you'll often see the word vector in things like C++, the standard C++ template library, and that vector is really just an array. It can be a vector, uh, you know, it could be a 20-dimensional thing. It could, not dimensional, but it can have 20 components in it um, or more. I mean, it's, it's just an array. It's just basically a, an array of things in memory. It has nothing to do with math or geometry. Just try not to get confused when you're using it. Um, when you see the word vector in programming, it often just means it's, uh, it's an array. Um, if it's not specific to some geometric application. The vectors that we've been talking about are ge geometry vectors, and these are basically the things that I was just talking about. They represent the direction and the magnitude in space, and they have all those other interesting concepts. They're very related to math vectors, but we don't have to think about the row and column nature of them. We just basically work with them. And I understand someone watching this is probably going to say what I'm saying is 100% correct. Uh, just a little disclaimer, I'm not a mathematician, I'm a game programmer. I don't care about math as much as just getting, you know, the game concepts across. So this video is really geared towards that. And that's why, um, basically, I don't care about those other two things when I'm talking about vectors. I care about the geometry vectors, which are used for, you know, concepts in, in game programming. Um, so these kind of vectors have special vector properties and operations that make vectors useful, and I'm going to go through those now. Um, the first one is that there's a basic arithmetic defined on all vectors, which is addition, subtraction, multiplication, component-wise multiplication, and division. And the best way you can think of this is that you can add two vectors together, subtract them, multiply them, divide them. And it's the same as if you did that on the individual x, y, and z components, as I've shown below in the C++ example. If you add two vectors together, you're really just adding the x and the y and the z of the respective vectors themselves to get the answer. Uh, in GLSL, it's a little more simple. Since they're built-in types, you just put a plus between them or any operator you want, you're good. 
Uh, the reason why I, I circled that multiplication step and I left out um, a time sign or something like that in between them is multiplication between vectors is very overloaded. Uh, it's a very overloaded concept. And component-wise multiplication between vectors is actually the least commonly least common kind of, of uh, multiplication done. But I wanted to still represent it here because it's still possible. Um, so now that I've confused you some more, uh, I'm going to go over the idea of the more special multiplication types or special product types done between vectors. Um, one of the most important ones is called the dot product. Uh, the dot product between two vectors is very useful for projecting vectors onto, onto each other. And uh, the thing that I use it a lot for, and this is, this is really uh, useful, is getting the angles between two vectors. And there's more, there's probably tons more applications of dot products, but those are the ones that I most commonly use dot products for. Uh, the angles between vectors is, is really useful when you're doing game programming. For example, if you wanted to see uh, whether, um, whether you're aiming at somebody or something like that, you would want to get the angle between two vectors and see if it's small enough to determine if you're, you know, if you're close to aiming to something else might be another example. Um, this is the part where the code examples start to get a little more um, confusing in C++. I didn't bring this up, but I want to bring it up now. Um, the implementation of these things, or how you actually do a dot product, you know, with the multiplying and adding, that is not as important as how you use them. I did not know, and I still don't really have memorized, uh, how, well, dot product I do because I use it so much, but it doesn't matter. You can copy-paste it, or you can look it up. It's not as important the math down there uh, as, as what the dot product does for you as a game programmer. So I really want to drill that. Some people get scared in the math and they go, oh, how, how am I supposed to know what this is all going to mean? It doesn't matter. It's almost like a black box. It's just, it's just a function that you use uh, is the best way to think about it. Uh, moving on, another kind of special product of vectors is called the cross product. Um, this is extremely useful uh, because this is how you determine the perpendicular or normal vector of a plane. Um, if you have two vectors and you want to get the perpendicular line that shoots between them, them both, that's perpendicular to both of them, the cross product will give that to you. Another example uh, or easier way to explain that is when I was showing that axis before. If you have the x and z axis, the vectors that make up the x and z directions, and you take the cross product of those two, you'll get the y-axis. shoots right up out of the, the plane that the x, z axes represent. Um, cross products are a little more complicated to uh, implement. And like, this is the part I just never have memorized, and I always just implement it once to copy and paste it from Google, and then I, I have it forever. Um, and in GLSL, they're a little simpler. They're just a built-in function called cross. But like I said, don't think about the stupid math behind them. Just think about what they provide for you, which is... Uh, you know, the ability to get a perpendicular. And that's extremely crucial for 3D lighting, being able to know how to calculate a normal vector. Um, and for other applications in uh, shading, light, shading in general, writing shaders. So that's cross products. I left this one out to the end because uh, I wanted to cover it. The simplest kind of multiplication, not the simplest, but next uh, next to component-wise multiplication, where you just multiply each each uh, x, y, z, or a component of the vector, there's scalar multiplication. And this is, you can think of this as you're scaling the vector, or you're scaling the magnitude of the vector. And really all you're doing is you're taking a normal number, just a scalar, and you're multiplying that number into uh, the x, y, and z of the vector. So it's, it's, it's very similar to component-wise multiplication, but you can multiply a vector in a normal number and it'll just scale it. Um, like I said, this affects the magnitude, or commonly called the length, of the vector, and that leads to uh, a property of vectors, very useful, called vector length. Um, this is how you determine just the magnitude part of a vector, and it is a scalar. The result is not another vector of the length, it's just a number. It tells you basically how long the arrow is. And uh, that's useful because you want to know how how strong the vector is or how what the magnitude of it is, you get the, uh, the length. Um, the easiest way to compute this is to just take the vector dot itself and then uh, take the square root of that and you basically have the length of uh, a vector. And um, 
you'll be using that a lot as a 3D game programmer because you, you want to know um, vector lengths. So that's a way of thinking of vector lengths. Another operation based off of uh, the vector length is called normalization. Um, this is useful for determining the direction of a vector. So the length gives you the magnitude. A normalized version of a vector gives you just the direction of the vector. And I'll explain that in just a second. Um, so if you have the length of a vector and you divide, uh, component-wise divide a ve vector by its length, you have a normalized version of the vector. Normalized vectors are uh, commonly referred to as unit vectors. A unit vector is um, basically a vector whose length is 1. And um, unit vectors are a special case of vectors in that they solely represent a direction. If the length of a vector is one, then the direction is based, or the, uh, the magnitude is essentially irrelevant, or it's um, it's uniform. It's, it's always one. So really, you're only thinking about the direction that this uh, vector faces. They always have a length of one. Um, Unit vectors are very useful because if you have just the direction, you can multiply it via scalar multiplication, and you can scale that vector as much as you want. So, for example, if you have um, the direction a car is facing in the form of a unit vector, and that vector is course length 1, and you multiply that vector by the speed of the car, you now have the velocity of the car. And the velocity meaning it's the direction the car is facing and the speed which is the, uh, the length. Um, normalization will always generate a unit vector, unless done, on the zero to vec unless done on the zero vector. So if you have a vector that's 0, 0, 0, you try to get the length of it, um, you'll divide by 0. Zero vectors are basically, they have no direction, which is why you can't normalize them. Um, they're really useful. Uh, unit vectors, normalized vectors, they're useful when you only need to represent a direction. I just mentioned it. So uh, I want to give you guys a simple example of how you actually use this stuff uh, to do graphics programming or game programming in general. Uh, to show you guys the utility of all the crap that you just watched. So um, I'm going to show you guys an example of vector addition here. So I have two vectors, v1 and v2, and they both represent directions and magnitudes. Um, if I wanted to add v2 to v1, it would basically be as if I took the tail of V2 and stuck it right on the head of V1. And it moves over just like that. And you have V3. Now, if you think of vectors as paths, uh, uh, yeah, just basically, if you think of vectors as pathways that you follow, adding two vectors together is as if you took both pathways one after the other. And that's basically what V3 represents. It's almost like a shortcut after taking V1 and V2, starting at wherever. So wherever you start at, when you apply the vector V1, you move up, and then you apply the vector V2, and then you move to essentially what V3 represents. So that's basically vectors uh, addition. An example of using vectors is offsets, adding them to positions. Vector subtraction is much more interesting. So I haven't really mentioned this, and I guess I kind of just showed you an example of it in the previous slide. It's possible to add two points together, add two points and two vectors, add points and vectors and subtract two points, and they're very interchangeable concepts. Like I said, vectors and points are structurally the same, it's just how you interpret things. And that means if you wanted to get the vector from A to B, all you need to do is subtract A from B. For example, the vector AB there, which is the vector from A to B, is B minus A. That's how you get it. Now that might seem, okay, that's kind of interesting. Well, how would you use this? Well, if you take AB from the last slide and you normalize it by basically dividing it by its length, D being the length, you now have a normalized version of AB, which is, if you remember before, it's just the direction. So now you have the direction from A to B. If A was standing somewhere far away and he just wanted to point at B or look at him, he now has that direction to B. And keep in mind that D up there was the distance between A to B. It's how far A is from B. 
So we basically decomposed AB into its two pieces of information, AB norm being the direction and D being the original magnitude. But now the magnitude of AB norm is just one. It's a unit vector. Well, what if we were to take AB norm and scale or multiply it by D? Basically, we end up with AB again because AB norm was one in length and then we multiplied it back up by D. We've basically now constructed a vector that follows AB norm D times gets you back up to B. Now this is where it gets kind of cool. Suppose we only wanted to get a halfway or a midway point between A and B. If we do AB norm times D times 0.5, we get the halfway point between A on its way to B. We're halfway there, living on a prayer. Anyway, that gets you halfway. So you can already see the utility here. Basically, AB norm, or any vector that is a normal vector, or sorry, any vector that is a unit vector can be used to follow that direction as much as you intend on the way to any amount of distance you want to go, including all the way to where you started, which was B, or even past B. Um, if we go 0.75, we get three quarters of the way to B. <clears throat> and what's really interesting is, if we wanted to, say, in C, make a for loop following, you know, in increments of 0.01, which is basically 1% each time, we could actually animate anything we wanted to. We can get the, the set of all positions on the way, on the line segment from A to B. And we basically can animate a point along that path. And that's one of the more really interesting applications of vectors. And that's just one of the things you can do with this kind of stuff. When you start thinking this way, when you start thinking along the lines of vector programming, uh, it, it really changes the way you think as a programmer. And it just opens up this wealth of, of opportunities for, for how you see your game programs. And uh, like I said, I'm going to bring this stuff all back into the domain of shaders. But I wanted to cover vectors first. We're going to move on and have another video soon. Thanks for watching, guys.